even great films can feel like gilded cages. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 actors who wanted out of franchises. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're discussing actors who left or wanted to leave film franchises they appear in or have appeared in. Because we'll be talking about some of these actors' characters' exits from said franchises, there may be some spoilers ahead. Number 10. Matt Damon, The Bourne Franchise I don't want to do this anymore. Matt Damon is practically synonymous with Jason Bourne, an amnesiac former spy attempting to uncover his past. The role arguably helped cement Damon as a movie star, and the franchise helped popularize frenetic action and has kept practical stunt work relevant in the age of CGI. However, Damon did not appear in the franchise's fourth film, declining due to the franchise's usual director, Paul Greengrass, not being at the helm. Damon later reappeared in the fifth film, which saw Greengrass return, but he has claimed that he and the public may be done with Jason Bourne or at least Damon's interpretation of the character. He hired you to put me under surveillance. Why? Jeez. Why did he hire you? Number 9. Natalie Portman, The Marvel Cinematic Universe I'm so sorry. I swear I'm not doing this on purpose. Superhero love interests are rarely the meatiest of roles. Natalie Portman's Jane Foster, a human romantically involved with the mighty Thor, is no different. After appearing in the first two Thor films, Portman did not return for the third, though she was reportedly interested in leaving the MCU even before filming the second film, only going through with the part at first due to Patty Jenkins being initially attached to direct it. Portman appears to be finished with Marvel, at least for now, but apparently she's open to returning someday. We have to do that again. Number 8. Channing Tatum, The G.I. Joe Franchise I'm going to make you very unhappy. I'm already unhappy. Sometimes, actors can't choose their roles. Such was the case for Channing Tatum, who played Duke in the live-action adaptations of the G.I. Joe franchise. Having signed a three-film deal with Paramount, Tatum was forced to appear in the action franchise, or else he would have had to face legal action. Although Tatum loved the cartoon as a child, he didn't like the script and felt trapped by the project, as it came just when he was starting to be offered more interesting roles. It might have been some small consolation then that his character was killed off early in the franchise's second movie. <laughs> Number 7. Kim Cattrall, Sex and the City I love you, but I love me more. Since portraying the fierce Samantha Jones in the Sex and the City show and sequel movies, Kim Cattrall has stated that she is finished with the role. Cattrall has repeatedly denied that she has any interest in the long-rumored third film, and rumors also abound of a poor relationship with her fellow cast members, chiefly Sarah Jessica Parker. Still, Cattrall has not explicitly stated any specific reason for her desire to retire from the role, although it is understandable if she's just tired of the part. 20 years is an awfully long time to be associated with a character, after all. And the answer was simply, thank you, but no. Number 6. Daniel Craig, The James Bond Franchise Do I look like I give a damn? The sixth actor to officially play the titular super spy, Daniel Craig has helped reinvent James Bond for a new millennium and a whole new generation of moviegoers. Even so, Craig has repeatedly claimed to want to leave the role, especially during the promotional tour supporting 2015's Spectre. Additionally, his relationship with director Sam Mendes has apparently become strained, given that they've worked together on both Skyfall and Spectre. Still, as of 2018, Craig is set to continue his 007 for at least one more film, while Mendez will not be directing the next installment in the franchise. Well, it's all a matter of perspective. Number 5. Orlando Bloom and Kira Knightley, The Pirates of the Caribbean Franchise How could I forget this one? Well, how many times must I ask you to call me Elizabeth? It's never a good thing when two of your stars want to abandon ship. Beginning with the first film, Orlando Bloom and Kira Knightley played the two romantic leads of the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan. But after three films, both of them wanted to move on and try other things. Things not involving ships, pirates, and Johnny Depp channeling Keith Richards. While both Bloom and Knightley returned for a cameo in 2017's Dead Men Tell No Tales, each has set sail elsewhere, seemingly for good. 
Number 4. Edward Norton, The Marvel Cinematic Universe Whatever you've heard about me, it's not true. Edward Norton smashed all expectations by delivering a great, believable performance as Bruce Banner, the man within the Incredible Hulk's titular green rage monster. Yet Norton did not return after his first film in the MCU, instead being replaced by Mark Ruffalo in The Avengers. Initial reports at the time suggested that Norton's departure was because of a contract or money dispute, but he's since explained that he didn't want to be tied to one role for a long period, instead preferring to have the freedom to take whichever project he wanted. Number 3. Harrison Ford, The Star Wars Franchise On Solo. I'm Captain of the Millennium Falcon. Even a franchise as storied as Star Wars has had actors who wanted out of it, though not for the reasons you might think. Harrison Ford played the famed roguish smuggler turned rebel hero Han Solo. Ford reportedly wanted his character to die as early as Return of the Jedi, the last in the original trilogy. Ford's desire for Han's death was due to his wish to be part of the franchise's more dramatic side. It's not that I wanted Han Solo to die. I wanted Han Solo to be able to lend some significant emotional weight to the story. After over 30 years, Ford did eventually get his wish in The Force Awakens, when Solo had his swan song. <laughs> Number 2. Michael Keaton the Burton Schumacher era Batman franchise. I'm Batman. Fans of the Batman comics were initially worried about Michael Keaton donning the cape and cowl, given that the actor was best known for his comedic roles. But Keaton soon proved to be the darkest, most complex Dark Knight seen on screen at that point. That probably fed into his disagreements with incoming director Joel Schumacher's intended vision for Batman Forever, and his decision to depart from the franchise. I'm leaving. As time would prove, Keaton was just the first of many who disliked Schumacher's campier interpretation of the caped crusader. Can I persuade you to take a sandwich with you, sir? I'll get drive through. Number 1. Sean Connery, The James Bond Franchise I admire your luck, Mr. Bond. James Bond. Sean Connery, the first man to utter the words Bond, James Bond, was also the first to leave the role behind. After five films, Connery had become weary of the static nature of both the character and the stories, as well as the attention he received because of the part, and feared being typecast. Still, when his own replacement, George Lazenby, vacated the role, Connery was lured back with a sizable payday, before stepping down once more and handing the role off to Roger Moore. My name's Bond. James Bond. However, Connery would later go head-to-head -head with Moore, playing Bond in the unofficial but aptly named Bond film Never Say Never Again. Do you lose as gracefully as you win? I wouldn't know. I've never lost. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.